Good morning, everybody. We have Mr. Sen John Providence, who is the team lead and of the Linux division in IPSR. He's a Red Hat certified architect. He's an RHCA, that is, and a Red Hat certified instructor, RHCI, with 14 plus years experience in the IT industry. He has completed his MSc in computer networking from London Metropolitan University. His experience in cloud computing and Ansible makes him a popular corporate trainer. And he has trained uh, candidates from America, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and, and Asia Pacific. Uh, that's a brief introduction about uh, Mr. Sen. Sen, over to you. OK, uh, good morning, all. Uh, by now, I hope everyone understood the importance of having skills in uh, Linux, cloud, and automation, and also in uh, containers. So I would like to give you some demonstration on automation in cloud by setting up some multiple web servers. So here I have a total of five servers. So out of five, I'm going to set up four servers as a web server. Uh, I will use Ansible as an automation tool. So I'm, I'm already logged into my control node. So that is acting as my Ansible control station. So the main objective is uh, I want to, you to convince that, okay, how the automation help you to uh, speed up the deployment of web servers. Like if you do it manually, if you do it manually, you need to follow these steps one by one steps in all of the machines, like installation of packages, uh, starting and uh, making that persistent in the background, then add the port to the firewall and create the index.html file or uh, any home page uh, that's supposed to be presented in the web server. So these all steps, so this is a basic code, okay? Don't think that it's a complicated one. This is a very basic code. Uh, even though it's a basic code, if you want to set up a thousands of web servers in a load balances. You need to do it manually, right? If you're going for a manual task. But I'm going to show you uh, how I can set up at least four web servers by executing a simple script. So at a time, four web servers will be up. So we'll check the current status. So we have node one, two, three, four. So I'll open the page with the public IP address. Okay, the page timed out. I'm signing in again. Okay, so this is the IP address of node four. Okay, currently the site cannot be reached. Okay, so currently the site is not ready. But I'm going to execute this playbook. So we call it as a playbook. See, once I executed the playbook, it started installing Apache and FireWalldy, FireWalldy on all the nodes, not only on a single node. It's doing on all the nodes. So even if it is a 50 nodes or 100 nodes, simultaneously, the packages, uh, the services, everything, all the tasks uh, initiated simultaneously. Now I refresh the page. See, welcome to webinar. So this was my code, right? So if I open the code, this is what I meant. Server web server with this content. Welcome to webinar. Uh, yeah. So that is node four. What about node one? Yeah, node one also showing the same content. And uh, node two. So this is actually publicly available. I'll put it in the chat box. All four servers set up simultaneously. Uh, 
Okay, I'm just putting one uh, IP address in the chat box just to check from your side. Okay. Suppose I want to change the content. Instead of welcome to webinar 2021 job trends in cloud and automation, I want to just put like welcome to IPSR. Okay. So I can simply type an ad hoc command. So this is the command Ansible. Then I'm mentioning all the nodes with module copy. Then I'm passing argument with content. So the content is welcome to IPSR. And the destination to specify that is the document root for Apache Web Server, that is var triple w HTML index for HTML. Okay, so this communication is happening. The communication between the Ansible control node to the managed host is happening, the SSH. So I should specify the username for SSH communication. So here I configure the username user, ec2 hyphen user. And also for doing this kind of uh, administration privileged task, I need privilege escalation. So that's what I'm using minus B here. Okay. There is a mistake, right? Because I didn't close the message. I didn't close the quotation. Yeah, now it's appeared on all the servers. Now you just refresh the page. It's welcome to IPSR. Here also welcome to IPSR. Third one, welcome to IPSR. These all happened simultaneously. So that, that that's a uh, advantage of using automation. Even if it is a 50 or 50,000 nodes, we can use the same playbook or same ad hoc command for doing any kind of task. So this is a simple example, like setting up a web server. So Ansible can be used for provisioning a new machine. Like we, I can call it as a infrastructure as a code. So we can define an in infrastructure as a code. So whenever you want, you can develop the infrastructure and whenever you want, you can destroy it. So I'm going to destroy the infrastructure now. So I already created a infra code for that. So that is Ansible. Playbook remove web.yaml. If I execute this, removing the ports, removing the packages, shutting down all the web servers. Yeah, removing the index dot page. So now you refresh. See, the site cannot be reached. So the point number one, I use this playbook to create something. Second, I use the Ansible to modify something. Third, I use this Ansible to destroy something. So these are the three things, right? You need a, an automation skill, right? For creating something, for modifying something, and whenever you don't need anything, you can destroy it. Suppose if you want to set up it again, it's a matter of uh, 30 seconds maybe. Ansible playbook. Web.yml. Installing the packages, starting the web servers, adding firewall root. Now refresh the page. Back to the previous one that is welcome to webinar. Okay, so these kind of skills, that's what Till now we heard right. So the skills which is required for the future career that is skills on cloud computing, skills on automation, and also the containers. I would like to show you the containers also. So for creating containers, I actually create I installed the package like Podman. So Podman is one of the uh, container runtime. So what do you mean by container then? See 
for setting up four web servers, I used four machines, right? So it's wasting resources. For setting up four web servers, I launched four virtual machines here in AWS. So now I'm going to show you within a single machine that is in a control node, I'm going to set up multiple web servers without using uh, multiple web servers, I mean, what multiple servers. Just using a single machine, how I can create or host multiple web servers with help of containers. So the containers is nothing but uh, a bundle of uh, packages, files, which is required, minimal required for setting up an application. So here I'm going to show you a web server. So the portman is already used or already installed here. So I'm going to search for some images because I need some images for creating containers. So sort of portman search. HTTPD is the package required for setting up a web server. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to use a uh, image. There are lots of images available for web server. So I'm going to use an image. Uh, I think this should work. I'm not sure because this is an open source pool of images. Let's try that. So I'm just trying to set up a web server. Okay, minus D means uh, run this container in the background. Then I'm also doing the port forwarding eight zero eight two. Yeah, there should be some sub command that is port man run. And also I should mention the name for this container that is web. Okay. Uh, okay, the web is already in use. Okay. So how to verify that it's already in use or not? Soda portman ps. Okay, it's already stopped. So port portman ps minus a. Yeah, so I will use the, this image. With web one. So I'm using a different name because web is already launched. Okay, so new container is created. See, if you compare with the creating of a virtual machines or a normal physical machines, it up to only a second to create a container. So now web server is ready. I'm just checking that curl. Local host, the port number 8082. Okay, it's just showing the web page. I mean, uh, the test web page. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to log into the container using portman ex easy command. So what is the container name? That is web1. And I should use the hyphen it for interactive terminal uh, with bin bash terminal. Okay, now I am inside the container. So this container is running on top of control node. So now I am inside the container. I'm updating the test, uh, I mean the index page with test page or welcome to IPSR. And I'm updating this to var triple w html index.html. So now it's updated, exit from there. Yeah, welcome to IPSR. So this is actually running in a container, not in a machine. So this is running in a virtual machine. This is running in a container. So how to access this externally? This is running on top of control node, right? So what is the IP address of that control node? This is the IP address of the control node. 
So opening the page. This will not work because I didn't mention the port number. So I should mention the port number 8082. So when I create the container, I use that port number 8082. Welcome to IPSR. So this way you can create multiple containers in the same machine. So that is the advantage over virtualization. The advantage of containerization over virtualization. Within a system, you can have a multiple containers by reducing the cost of resources. So that is the difference between containerization and uh, uh, virtualization. OK. So I hope you, you got some idea about uh, uh, the importance of cloud uh, automation containers. So we have a, a premium training and internship in system administration, cloud containers and automation. So that is actually four to six months. It takes four to six months. So you will be getting hands-on training, personal mentoring and uh, live internships, like uh, all Sasa mentioned, like uh, yeah, the skills, I mean, the skills based on the case studies is very important. And also the global certification like RHCSA and RHC. So these are the curriculum for the premium course. The first one is Linux administration one for understanding AWS, cloud, containers, automation. You, you all need the knowledge of Linux. Linux, any Linux flavor, especially Red Hat Enterprise Linux, because uh, that is an enterprise version of Linux. So for understanding these, these advanced topics, you all need the basic understanding of Linux, then uh, networking. So after completing these two modules, system administration one and two, you can go for an RHCSA global certification. Then the third, uh, third module is Linux automation with Ansible. So that is completely like I, sh I showed you the demonstration, right? So that is one of the basic uh, demo uh, demonstration for the Ansible. But this Ansible can be used for creating machines, modifying machines, uh, modifying configuration files on destroying infrastructure, creating infrastructures. So in different cases, so automation, if I uh, tell me, if, if I tell you the what is automation means, okay, automating uh, some manual task, right? But you should have some domain knowledge, like automating. If you want to automate in networking, you should have domain knowledge in networking. If you want to automate in Linux, you should have domain knowledge in Linux. So prior to uh, learning automation with Ansible, the knowledge in Linux is important. So that's why we, we were starting with uh, Linux administration one and two then global certification, then uh, uh, detailed uh, uh, training on automation with Ansible. Of course, the networking is important because see, we are we are network now, right? So the networking knowledge is important and also the server uh, administration, uh, like the server client concepts. So before going to these topics, AWS cloud containers and automation, these modules will be covered. And this this is mended by a team. Uh, unit one, like I told, it's a, an introduction to Linux administration. Unit two, more advanced uh, Linux administration, like uh, tra training, hands-on training on how to um, um, manage logical volumes, like storage partitions, then how to schedule jobs, then things about SC Linux firewalls. And also, you will get an introduction to containers on module two. So in module three, OK, that is module two. In module three, it's completely automation. It's starting from the very beginning, like how introducing Ansible, how to deploy Ansible, then how to write playbooks, like I just showed you now, how to write a playbooks. Then in details of playbooks, like how to use variables, looping, then uh, Main th important thing is roles, how to create roles in Ansible and troubleshooting. And finally, we have some case studies related to <clears throat> common Linux administration tasks, like how to synchronize time, how to configure networking in multiple nodes. Yet yeah, you, you will see different case studies in Linux administration. 
After that, you can go for RXE certification. Then in unit four, basic networking and server administration. So after RXCSA and CE, then certification, you can go for unit four. Unit four covers uh, server configuration for website and web apps. See, I just showed you only the basic web service, right? But there will be some complicated uh, scenarios. So how to manage that kind of complicated scenarios, how to secure your server, that is server hardening, how to tune your servers, then monitoring and troubleshooting uh, tools, shell scripting, then servers like mail server, DNS, FTP, yeah, these are very important. DNS, FTP, uh, then understanding of Jenkins, then hands-on practice on cPanel, WHM, and, and basic hardware networking knowledge. So that will be covered in unit four. In unit five, yeah, so this is our premium one. We'll be discussing on AWS cloud containers and automation with some case studies, and also you will be getting a mentoring support. So in unit five, we'll start with the cloud introduction, like AWS, main public clouds like AWS Azure, and also we'll discuss about the regions uh, and available zones with AWS and Azure. Then networking, that is virtual private cloud, module two. Then module three is more advanced about VPC. Then module four, network address translation, that is NAT. Module five is VPC traffic and monitoring. Module six, uh, VPN, again, VPN related topics. Module seven, again, VPC peering issues, okay, troubleshooting VPC peering issues, and what is transit gateway and all. And module eight, introduction to ECT, Elastic Cloud Computing. Actually, I use the EC2 servers here. So these are some EC2 servers. So we'll be discussing on that. Introduction to EC2 and how to deploy. And also the images, how to create images for creating EC2. Module nine is based on load balancing. So there are different types of load balancers available in the AWS, application, network, uh, yeah, different methods for methods of load balancing. Then auto scaling. Auto scaling is nothing but uh, based on the requirement. For for example, uh, uh, you host a web website, right? Okay, so in, initially or, or only a uh, ten to hundred clients are uh, accessing your web server. Okay, so that's fine with the uh, minimal resources, but sometimes. Uh, it, if more people coming to access the web server, so more resources re is re required, right? So if you go for a manual uh, scale up or scale down or scale a horizontal scale out or scale in, uh, it's a tedious task. So you can automate using auto scaling features. That is one of the main features with AWS. So that will be discussed in module 10. Then introduction to AWS system manager, that is module 11. Then uh, object storage. So there are different types of storages, right? Object based storage, file based storage, block based storage. So S3 is it's almost in like a Google Drive. So it's object storage. So introduction to AWS S3 in module 12. Module 13 is something related to database. Module 14 it's monitoring. That's CloudWatch. Module 15 introduction to identity and access management. Okay, so this is important, right? Uh, the identity management and access managers and the role groups, security policies, all comes under module 15. Then module 16, certificate manager, AWS certificate manager, introduction to that and how to create route 53. Because in previous module, I mean, previous unit, we discussed about, uh, we'll, we, we will discuss about uh, DNS, right? So, so that is route 53. The port number of DNS is 53. That's come the name root 53. Then module 17, containerization. Okay, introduction to container, uh, introduction to ECR, ECS. So that's a part of AWS containerization. Then module 18, migration, AWS migration. Module uh, 19, introduction to AWS developer tools. 20, again, introduction to automation and configuration tool. So here, we are discussing uh, about Terraform. It's one of the uh, automation tool. Then understanding the difference between Terraform and the cloud formation. 
then 21, module 21, that is Ansible, and also another automation tool called Puppet. OK. Then module 22, AWS Data Analytics. Then module 23, AWS Lambda. Module 24, day-to-day -day activities of AWS admin. So that is some case study related uh, discussions will be happening on module 24. Yeah. So that's all about our premium course. OK, so that's from my part. OK, over to Sijin. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for this uh, wonderful session. Thank you for showing us some practical demonstration of this uh, um, automation and container technologies.